Коллеги, добрый день. Good day, colleagues. Happy to welcome you to the Bank of Russia. We're starting the press conference by the governor of the Bank of Russia, Elvira Nabiulina, in follow-up of Board of Governors meeting. With this, I would like to give the floor to Her Excellency, the governor, who will deliver a statement, and after that, we'll do a Q&A session. Good day, colleagues. Today, the Bank of Russia decided to reduce the key rate to 10.5% per annum. We repeatedly stated that we see potential for rate decrease as soon as the conditions are in place for inflation to slow down to the target level. And now we are more confident that inflation is on the path to drop and will reach 4% target by the end of 2017. After heightened uncertainty and risks earlier this year, we see that the economic situation is stabilizing. The dynamics, both of the economy and the inflation, is better than we expected. Overall, inflation risks have abated. However, there are still some risks related to domestic factors, inertia in inflation expectations and uncertainty and fiscal policy. We're confident we will be able to reduce inflation to the target level, even if the inflation risks materialize. But to do that, we need to proceed with cautious and balanced approach, upholding moderately tight monetary policy. In the future, we will consider a possibility of further reducing key rate, only if the inflation declines aligns with the forecast trajectory and inflation expectation decrease. Let me give you more detail concerning the factors that the Bank of Russia's Board of Directors took into account when making its decision. There's growing confidence in the sustainability of the trend of inflation moving down to the target. First, inflation is showing a better performance. In defiance of our expectations for annual inflation to grow in the second quarter on the back of the past year's low base, it is not rising. Inflation is has stated at 7.3, thus it beats our forecast. The, inflation, the current inflation indicators are still lower than the annual ones, standing at about 5%. The average monthly annualized inflation for the last three months seasonally adjusted. This reflects the recent weakening in inflation processes. Second, the temporary positive factors are still making an impact, dragging inflation down, despite the fact that the impact is becoming less salient, the strengthening of the rubble in the second quarter helped check inflation, the response of domestic prices to rubble exchange rate fluctuations remained on a downward path. In the short term, we do not expect any expressed impact of the exchange rate on inflation. The low growth rate of producer costs are also positively impacting the performance of consumer prices. This is partially connected with the drop in global energy prices seen at the beginning of the year and muted performance of wages. Importantly also, the regulated prices and rates are said to be indexed in July in line with the previously declared indicators. The value of indexation is less than half of what it was in the past year. Another factor is the drop in fruit and vegetable prices between March and April occurred on the back of the favorable environment made up of strong estimate for crops, high stocks, global, low global prices, and spring fruit and vegetables were becoming cheaper earlier than usual, thereby decreasing the consumer price index. However, in our inflation forecast, we recognize that fruit and vegetables may show weaker than usual pace of cheapening in the summer season following the recent material drop in the prices since spring. Therefore, we can say today that in the first half of the year, no risk materialized due both to external environment and internal factors. The risks are declining steadier, making positive impact on the performance of inflation. Third, the guarantee that inflation decline is set to continue as a fact of short-term factors, run their course from the factors of the more long-term nature which include low demand and moderately tight monetary conditions. These two factors explain why some improvements in the economic situation that we've been seeing lately, mainly in the production industry, generate no additional pressure on inflation. Consumers remain cautious 
they're continuing to save more. The level of actual interest rates is helping preserve the attractiveness of saving for households, therefore containing growth of consumer spendings, even as nominal wages are going slightly up. The Bank of Russia has lowered its forecast for inflation for the end of the current year to 5 6%. In June, uh, we might see a short-lived increase in annual growth rates of consumer prices that were published uh, in June. Press release was less than 7%. But moving forward, growth rate of consumer prices will continue to shrink, mainly on the back of demand limitations. Annual inflation is expected to total less than 5% in May 2017, reaching the target rate of 4% by the end of 2017. As we were making the key rate decision, we also took into account the factor which leads to softening monetary conditions, even if the key rate is unchanged. I refer to the onset of surplus liquidity in the banking sector due to federal fund spending. In the conditions of surplus of liquidity, banks feel no need to attract financial resources from the central bank and will conversely, conversely place funds with it. Banks could reduce their deposit rates and soften price and then not price lending terms with a key rate unchanged. Structural liquidity deficit is currently observed, but its level has been considerably reduced as compared to last year's peaks. We take into account that onset of surplus liquidity is expected to take place next year, somewhat later than we previously expected, because federal fund expenditures are to be cut down as the external economic environment becomes more favorable. We have a full tool set at our disposal that would allow us in the surplus liquidity conditions to first of all secure operational control over rates in the money market and secondly keep monetary conditions moderately tight. The Russian banking sector has already experienced the liquidity surplus before so the situation is now new to us. In order to steer the money market rate the conditions of liquidity surplus, we will hold regular liquidity absorption operations instead of liquidity provisioning operations. We are doing now. In the future, there are plans to include the issuance of the Bank of Russia bonds. Their placement in the test mode is coming shortly. The Bank of Russia will use available instruments to limit the surplus. We're already selling government securities from our portfolio. We also look into the increase in required reserve ratio for rubble deposits. And we're considering an option of cancelling privileges as regards some liabilities. Today, we made a decision in favor of additionally increasing required reserve ratio for FX deposits. This measure is designed to discourage growth of assets liabilities, FX liabilities of banks, but will also have an indirect impact on terms of transition to liquidity surplus to preserve the reliable tightness of monetary conditions and ensure better performing transmission. We stand ready to apply measures of macroprudential regulation. In particular, the Bank of Russia decided, and it is principal decision, to cancel anti-recession of regulatory eases on unsecured consumer loans when this segment expands at rates exceeding household income growth, it can carry inflation risks. Another factor we considered when deciding on the key rate is output of goods and services and production activity. The dynamics exceeds our expectations and these developments are not accompanied by higher inflationary pressure, the Russian economy is truly becoming more resilient to external developments. In the first quarter, GDP shrinkage was below the forecast, despite the drop in oil prices in the beginning of the year. It is important that 
the improvement economic environment is happening not only due to the improvement in the oil market, the positive structural trend continues to develop, and substitution and non-oil and gas exports, including chemicals and food, are growing. We're seeing new points of growth emerging, growth in production of some consumer goods, apparel, furniture. All of that indicates lower supply-side inflation risks. However, the observed positive developments are still of local nature, non-homogeneous among different industries and regions, still too small in scale to define the overall economic dynamics. We revised our economic forecast upwards, taking into account the actual GDP exceed in expectations and more favorable external economic environment. Our baseline scenario envisages the downturn to run down as soon as in the second half of the year with quarterly GDP growth entering positive trajectory. In 2017, we predict the annual GDP to grow by 1.3%. The revised baseline scenario provides for the oil price at $40 per barrel over a three-year horizon, which is slightly above the March forecast. However, we stick to the conservative forecast to expect prices to adjust from the current level, given the persistent oil high demand and all-time high supplies. The price growth in May and April largely resulted from temporary factors, including supply interruptions and excessive optimism in global markets. A likely increase in the Fed's rate may also have negative impact on commodity and financial asset prices. As for the balance of payment over the forecast horizon, we do not see any considerable risks emanating from it. External debt is shrinking gradually and smoothly. We expect in 2016, 17, and 18, that net capital outflow, that is the difference between capital outflow and inflow, will remain low by historic standards, not higher than 25 to 30 US billion US dollars. There are several reasons for that. First, capital outflows and uh, external debt repayments will shrink according to the repayment schedule. Besides that, data suggests that companies and banks are largely capable to refinance even if sanctions remain in place. Second, as the economic environment gradually improves, they will be able to more actively raise funds from abroad. Third, Modest economic and income growth, as well as persistent difference in active rates in Russia and abroad, and stricter rules for opening deposits in foreign jurisdictions will limit possibilities for building up investment in foreign assets. Gradual economic revival, we are expecting, will not hinder inflation reduction, provided that consumers remain conservative and inflation expectations continue to go down. The recovery of demand will not outpace production recovery. Nevertheless, inflation risks are still in place. This is yet another factor that we are taking into account. Should the risks materialize, inflation may be reducing slower than forecasted, calling for tighter monetary policy for a longer period of time. Major inflation risks currently stem from domestic environment, possible changes in consumers and business behavior, they may be manifested through excessive optimism, higher consumer spendings that outpace production dynamics. This may result from the easing, easing of fiscal policy, especially in social expenditures, wage indexation, outpacing labor productivity growth, and loss of saving attractiveness for households. At this moment in time, those risks do not impact on inflation significantly. An increase in nominal wages that took place early this year did not result in a surge in consumer demand or an increase in retail trade turnover. Though it was slightly above our expectations, there is still uncertainty concerning, concerning mid-term strategy of the fiscal policy. Inflation expectations of both households and businesses are gradually going down at this moment. Financial market data and analyst surveys also signal higher confidence in inflation reduction. This trend must be maintained 
and anchored for inflation expectations to decline to the levels our economy is accustomed to, otherwise the inertia of inflation expectations may cause inflation to stabilize at the level that would exceed our target of 4%. We cannot rule out another drop in oil prices, therefore we still consider risk scenario with oil price at $25 per barrel. In that case, inflation as of the end of 2016 would exceed 6.5% and GDP will fall by about 1%. But we estimate the probability of this scenario as low. Amid the persistent inflation risk, it is very important that monetary policy remains reasonably prudent. Balanced approach to the monetary policy is very important, not only in order to reduce inflation, but for the economy in general. Its recovery should be balanced. Income and consumption growth should not outpace production and labor productivity. Russian economy knows very well what negative implications of such developments could be. Their unsustainable, low quality growth and unmanageable inflation expectations. Therefore, it is very important both for the macroeconomic policy and economic agents to remain reasonably conservative. This will enhance the currently observed structural shifts and will pave the way for high quality economic growth. This is a path towards sustainably low inflation and sustainably low rates for the economy. The transition towards this model is realistic. Moreover, we have made a good starting point. It is essential for us to retain the achievements and continue to move forward consistently, progressively. Thank you for your attention and I'm ready to take your questions. Colleagues, don't forget to introduce yourselves. Elena Fabrichne Reuters. Can you say that the current lowering of the rate is just the beginning of a new cycle? No, we cannot. That said, we are confident that with proper monetary policy in place, we will be able to achieve our 4% inflation target by the end of next year. So we see potential for further reduction of the key rate, but the trajectory of the reduction and specific conditions as to when how will the rate be reduced? It will be related to the development of the economic policy, to the emergence of inflation risks. So we remain cautious, our approach remains balanced. So it is a possibility, but we are not ready to say that we are seeing the beginning of a cycle. You can see in the Belkina Interfax Agency. As regards bonds of the Bank of Russia, when will the bonds be issued? What amount of the issue could be? I also mentioned that you are considering increasing contributions to the insurance fund. Well, as regards issuance of the Bank of Russia bond, in terms of managing the liquidity, we do not think there's need for issuing new bonds because we're currently still at the phase where this lack of structural liquidity. However, we haven't made any issuances in a long time where therefore we are ready to do a test issuance in the next months for a few tens of billions of rubles and we'll see what the demand would be. So we're talking about two to three months. Igor Alexandrovich is more cautious than me, so we need to do some preparations, see what the market preferences are. But we're ready to do so even when the structural deficit of liquidity remains in place, just to check this instrument as regards increase in mandatory reserves as regards FX liabilities. This is part of our policy aimed at incentivizing 
de-dollarization of banks. As you remember, probably, we recently took first step in that direction. FX was related to FX liabilities, so this is the second step in the same direction, and we're preparing for shift towards surplus of liquidity. Second, as regards possible provisioning requirements for rubble-nominated instruments, we're considering this possibility, among other instruments aimed at slowing down the shift towards surplus of liquidity. So it is a different instrument. We will need, as we move on from liquidity deficit to surplus, but we will need to talk it over with banks, analyze possible implications of such a step, because it is an important step. But this instrument remains in our toolkit as regards specific parameters. We are going to discuss them with market participants. Bloomberg agency Olga Tanas. A question about the real rate. Even if you're reducing the rate by 0.5 uh, points, uh, the spread remains at 2 to 3 percent. What level of real rate is normal from the bank's point of view? Because for an economy in recession, it is very high if we believe some analysts. Well, how does one measure real rates? It is not always just a correlation of a nominal rate with the current inflation, because when economic agents decide to place a deposit in banks or to open loans to the economy, they usually do a correlation of the nominal rate with the inflation expectations, so they're looking ahead. Therefore, we're looking at the real rate when nominal, we compare nominal rates with inflation expectations. However, even in that case, those rates remain rather high. We think it would be what would be a normal rate. Well, there are different calculations, there are different estimates. We'd say they stand somewhere in between two and a half, three percent. That said, since we are in the beginning of our inflation targeting, until inflation expectations are anchored up, real rates can and must be kept at the level a little higher than the balanced in order to anchor inflation expectations and stabilize the inflation. I hope this answers your question. Today, in your press release, you sent a different message to the market indicating the change of word in regard to possible for the lowering of the rate, making it less explicit. Well, last time we said that it, we could reduce the rate at one of the upcoming meetings of the board, which we did. But like I told you, in order to be able to talk about further reduction, timelines for that reduction and conditions, we'd need to get more information since inflation risks remain in place, although I want to stress that we're seeing positive dynamics and we're much more confident that we will achieve the target of 4%. Just Reuters, uh, there is risk that Brexit risks are underestimated. Should Great Britain really exit the European Union, will that pose a significant risk for the Russian economy and the system in general? We do not anticipate any direct implications of Brexit, not for our economy, but there might be indirect implications, because should Brexit become reality, there will be implications. for 
the economy of the European Union, which is one of our major trading partners. It will also have impact on the global markets. There'll be turbulences that might have impact on commodity markets and on our economy, but I don't perceive, I don't expect any direct or significant risks for the Russian economy. Mitchell Budenko, Commerzant. The current combination of rather high rate and low inflation is a perfect arrangement for the carry trade. Do you expect higher risks related to carry trade in the third and fourth quarter, and what will you do should this takes place? Well, we don't see high risks, we don't see high volumes of carry trade at the moment. Andrei Korzentas. Starting in March, we've seen reduction in volatility of the ruble exchange rate, and it remains the rate remains low. Do you think FX situation is favorable and could the Bank of Russia resume purchasing FX to replenish gold and foreign currency reserves? Well, the volatility has gone down a little, which is explained by a number of factors, about, explained by the situation on the oil market. Market players are also adjusting to the floating rate they're hedging and ensuring their currency risks more as regards our interventions on the FX market. In our baseline scenario, we do not provide for this opportunity until the end of 2018, but we'll see how the situation unfolds. So this is not part of our strategy now. Igor Zubkov, Rossiyska newspaper. Could you please please clarify? Do I understand correctly that through liquidity absorption, the Bank of Russia will not allow interest rates to go down to the level where consumer market can go up? Well, we do not. We're not against uh, rejuvenation of the consumer market. It will. There will be a boost, and we see that in our forecast, but the rate of growth should not boost inflation. So we're seeing positive trends, production of dom domestic production of goods is going up, but there are at the same time risks, potential risks, that uns unsecured consumer lending could resume. We're seeing individual signals. We've been seeing individual signals over the past few months. This is not yet a trend. Nonetheless, we decided to go back to the macroprudential measure that we gave up in 2015, higher provisioning for unsecured consumer loans. So the coefficient was at 1%, and we decided as of August 1st to go back to the higher coefficient so as to make sure that unsecured consumer lending grows at a rate that would not create inflation risks. As regards operations in general, aimed at absorbing liquidity, you know the toolkit we have. Uh, the central bank knows how to operate in the situation where there's surplus of liquidity. Today we hear from certain experts of bankers very bold statements that when there's surplus of liquidity, one can ignore the key rate of the central bank. And finally, we will be independent in defining our rate policy. They will be independent, but key rate will continue playing its role and will defy the structure of rates in the economy, only the role will change. We will still impact short-term money market rates through the absorption mechanism. This rate should be somewhere in the middle of the corridor, lower part of it rather than in the upper part of it, and banks will be guided by our key rate and not just 
look at it when attracting funds, but also when placing funds, because our deposit auctions will allow them to place their funds with very little risk, and then we'll see how they place funds and how they issue loans. So our rate will still be defining the correlation, and we're confident that we will be able, through this mechanism, to achieve our inflation target. Do you want to clarify something? Have you changed the GDP forecast and the baseline scenario for this year? Yes, we improved the GDP forecast. Like I said, we think that the second half of the year, at latest, the quarterly rate will be, become positive. Overall, this year, the dynamics will be negative, but still better than previously. Now we're looking at minus 0 0.3 minus 0 minus 0 0.7 and in the past it was 1 minus 1.3 so it's a considerable improvement Grigory Kogan Lentaru In your statement you mentioned twice uncertainty of the fiscal policy what specific decisions do you expect the decision making bodies to take the Ministry of Finance in the first place, and what conditions should be put in place in terms of the fiscal policy for the central bank to be prepared to reduce the key rate further? Well, we need to understand how the fiscal deficit will be reduced in the next three years. We believe it should be reduced in the next three years, and we support the consistent policy of the Ministry of Finance that uh, want to achieve reduction by 1% every year, but such a decision should be taken and it should be supplemented by relevant measures and steps in terms of spendings and revenues, and then the Central Bank and all market participants will understand the fiscal strategy. Right now, we think that the option and scenario of the Ministry of Finance is very realistic. We proceed from this scenario, but risks are still present. Olga Kovšinova you mentioned that possible next reduction will depend on two risks, inertia of inflation expectations and fiscal policy. Will you be looking off at both risks simultaneously? Or will one risk become in reality be sufficient grounds for not reducing the key rate? And second question, you used to refer to the Fed's policy as one of the factors of uncertainty. You did not mention it this time. Does it mean that everything's clear for you in terms of the Fed's policy? Or are you taking this into consideration in your decisions? Well, we'll look at the combination of the two risks, because they're both important risk of inflation expectations and the risk of the fiscal strategy. So we'll look at the combination of the two. When we make decisions on the key rate, we always look at the multitude of factors and the combination. Today, these are the two major factors that we are monitoring as regards the decision of the Fed. In our forecast, we believe that the increase of the rate will be gradual and market expectations will be managed efficiently. We've seen that lately market participants' expectations have been taken into account in our forecast. We think that one or two increases might take place this year, but we expect them to be gradual. We do not anticipate any turbulences at the global financial market. You could say in the writer, taking into account all steps taken by the Bank of Russia recently. 
to regulate FX liquidity in the banking sector. Do you think it is possible that FX deposit rates in the banking sector could be negative? No, no. I don't think this risk is possible, and I would call this a risk. They have been reducing, going down lately, but they remain in the positive zone, and they remain attractive for the citizens. The dollarization was reduced because of the strengthening of the rate, but we do not see any major shifts in terms of FX deposits. I don't think that the risk that might go in the negative in the near future is possible. Has the Bank of Russia revised its risk scenario inflation forecast for the year 2016-2017? In the, it was 5.2 for the year 2017. Well, we did revise the risk scenario for the inflation. And we see that should all price stand at $25 per barrel, then in 2017, we will not achieve our inflation target of 4%. In that case, inflation might be slightly above 5%. And then in uh, 2018, it could stand at 4.5%. 4, 4 but again, Right now, the probability of the risk scenario is low, lower than last time we met. One more question about FX repo. The remaining debt is 14 billion, and you're shifting from monthly to from annual to monthly. What will the next step be? Will you? be further reducing the amount of debt through options? Well, in our calculations, we believe that by the end of 2017, the FX repo debt will be paid off gradually. And in our report on the monetary policy, you will see that by the end of 2017, we expect gold and foreign currency reserves to increase 22 billion uh, due to those operations. We're seeing that the current FX market situation is comfortable, demand is low, therefore this instrument is not very much in demand. Twenty two billion over two years, fifteen plus seven billion. We're seeing a trend on the market of lower dependence of the market rates from the key rate. Do you think that entails risks? We do not see such a trend. Money market rates are dependent on the key rate. What we are seeing is what we expected, anticipated, and forecasted. We're seeing softening of the monetary situation, reduction of rates on deposits and loans due to reduction of the structural deficit of liquidity. We took all these factors into consideration when we made our previous decision, and so did with this time. Therefore, nothing is out of control. Artem Daniel and Bloomberg Agency. Central banks are usually characterized either as doves or as hawks. In light of your current decision to lower the rate, how would you characterize your own policy? Well, central banks normally refrain from characterizing their policies. Let us leave it up to the market participants. Dmitry Polanski, Rambler News Agency. When will you? we go back to optimistic scenarios. We've had so many optimistic scenarios. You can look at the track record we have. We can update optimistic scenarios, but 
joking aside, when revising main trans and monetary policy for the three years, we'll do all the revisions and we'll look at what scenarios we need for the upcoming three years. Do I understand correctly that you are planning to start that you will only start test operations after you've sold federal loan bonds? Well, no, there is no direct correlation irrespective of when we sell all the remaining loan bonds we have in our portfolio. We will do test placements when we are prepared. It is not dependent on the time when we send the remaining federal loan bonds. Do you see that there's a persistent trend of rivals stabilizing, or is the trend not stable yet? Well, in our baseline scenario, we do not see factors that would result in high volatility of the rubble rate in the near future, but its actual trend will depend on the market situation. More colleagues? More questions? Elena Shepilova, live. What is the oil price in the baseline scenario? $40 per barrel next year and, and in 2018 for this year, we think for the baseline scenario that, that the oil price will be moving towards $40 per barrel by the year and by the average will be at 38. When I stress, we're very conservative, much more conservative than most forecasts. But we think that this conservative stance is justified. In your statement, you said that the Bank of Russia's monetary policy will remain moderately tight. But at the same time, you say that the key rate might be softened. Isn't that a contradiction? And for how long will the monetary policy of the Bank of Russia remain moderately tight? Well, moderately tight monetary policy can and will be preserved even as the key rate is going down. The moderately tight monetary policy results in inflation reduction, but the rate remains a little higher than the balance in the long run from 2.5 to 3 percent, like I said previously. So the rate will be slightly above the level even after we've reached 4 percent at the end of 2017. Therefore, there will be a lag to anchor inflation expectations at the lower level and achieve sustainable inflation at 4 percent. We do not want to just reach the 4 percent target once and then see the inflation surge. We need to achieve sustainably low inflation based on sustainably low inflation expectations. Not so long ago, I remember, a fiscal rule was discussed for the next three years. The Ministry of Finance said that the new fiscal rule will make no sense unless the central bank performs interventions on the FX market. What option is on the table right now? And do you think that this fiscal rule could damage inflation targeting efforts? Well, the fiscal rule can and should be structured in such a way that it will not depend on the Bank of Russia's interventions on the FX market. We are not planning to impact the rate throw interventions because it is market driven, but I fully share that there is need for the fiscal rule. To make fiscal spending more sustainable against the external situation. This is what our economy needs to deliver on its commitments. It will be discussed in the near future. This is one of the parameters that will make, that will add certainty to the fiscal policy when we talk about 
uncertainty, or what we mean very largely is that there is no clarity as to what happens to revenues generated through uncertainties on the market. Is the Bank of Russia taking into consideration possible increase in pensions that's been largely debated? Could that have pressure on the inflation? And do you think that this step is necessary? Well, continued discussions is one of the uncertainties of the fiscal policy we are taking into consideration when making this decision today. We thought that those uncertainties and related risks and absence of the final decision on the increase is a factor. Last question, colleagues. Is the bank of Russia expecting rough landing for the Chinese economy this year or next year. We believe that the growth rate reduction of the Chinese economy will be under control and transition from one model of economic growth to the new one will be controlled Although we are considering all risks related to all developments in the global economy and the risk scenario, $25 per barrel, takes into account all sorts of possible negative factors impact. The very last question, question about the YouTube project. The economy is easy to understand. Do you get any feedback on the project from your target audience? How do you, what do you think of the project? Users are not allowed to comment, by the way. Well, we do receive comments, we do receive feedback, but we think that one of our priorities should be to explain to the general public and market participants and plain language how the financial sector and monetary policy operates. Explain our decision-making process because it helps to manage expectations in the economy. So we'll continue implementing the project. And if you have any feedback, if you have any suggestions on how to make it better and more efficient, we're open to your comments. Thank you very much. Colleagues for very good and very professional questions.